So last week we looked at the um, introduction. <laughs> then they have. <laughs> then they have. You know how. Then they come. No, last week we looked at the uh, oh, overview. Main can they? This is a classroom. Into the Aukari in the Hombi TV. <laughs> so last week we look at the introduction to, um, or we look at the overview of the course. Today I want to look at what I refer to as introduction to taxation. Advanced taxation. <laughs> introduction to taxation. We'll be looking at some basic and fundamental issues that we have to discuss about the Ghana tax system, uh, tax administration in Ghana. We'll look at the various issues about uh, taxation. Then, if we still have time in it, we'll look at um, tax planning. We'll start with the issue about tax planning, how we plan tax, because um, in the syllabus is divided into three. So, optimal um, tax issue, that's 60% of the syllabus. And we're going to be spending a lot of time to find out the various investment opportunities that are exposed to businesses. And uh, we will solve a couple of questions from there. From there, after that, we will come to the second aspect, which is 30%, where we'll be doing some serious calculation issues there for taxes for companies, including petroleum companies, mining companies, or oil exploration or companies. So we'll be discussing those things there. Then definitely the last one, ten percent we'll be talking about communication. So from now till sometime later, we'll be focusing a lot on this. And then I'll put together a couple of questions that we'll be solving also under this. But the first thing I'll be doing is take you through all the rules and the principles. Then when we finish, we pick questions that we solve the questions and refer the rules and the principles as we are solving the questions. So let's begin with the journey of introduction to taxation. Now, even though this is a level three aspect, certainly the examiner will throw some shades on uh, introduction to taxation, which we must know about. So two questions we must ask of the bet. What is tax and what is taxation? Mm -hmm. What is tax, what is taxation? So tax is uh, a lift. Mm -hmm. That is uh, it's taxes, an amount levied on the individual. <laughs> taxes is the amount levied okay. on the individual. Well, it's, it's a, a levy that is imposed on the individual. Imposed on the individual, meaning that it's compulsory, right? Yeah. It's not optional, because if you are given an option, you would have said, I don't like it, I'm not going to pay it, right? So in a simple language, we say that tax is a compulsory, non-refundable, non tax is a compulsory, non-refundable sum of money. Tax is a compulsory, non-refundable sum of money collected by the state from the citizenry, collected by the state from the citizenry, collected by the state from the citizenry, for the socio-economic development of the state, for the socio-development, sorry, socio-economic development of the state, for the socio-economic development of the state. Right. So that is an issue about tax. It's a compulsory and non-refundable because who will give it back to you? Nobody. So even if you file your tax returns and the Commissioner General realizes that the company has paid more taxes than required, they won't give you the money. They will say, we are carrying it forward to the next accounting year. So we cannot refund it to you. It's a compulsory payment. Now, in that, in that definition, you heard the word state. We could replace that with what? Government. It's the same thing. We could replace that with government, and it's the same thing. It doesn't take anything. Now, taxation or tax, imposition of tax on citizens, can be dated back in the time of uh, Jesus Christ, as far as that time. And uh, Jesus Christ was asked about 
tax payment issues, right? And then <laughs> you don't know about that one. Okay. I'm a Muslim. You are a Muslim. Okay. But you read the Bible. So this is specifically in uh, Mark 12, 13 to 17 in the Bible, where um, Jesus was asked about taxation and then he uh, and with his disciples as well and that was where he directed peter to go and catch a fish in the mouth there was a gold coin used it to pay tax for jesus christ and with his disciples so the issue about taxation is <laughs> i'm going to throw this at you is dated as far as that time and that is what has been a major source of revenue to governments across the country taxation has been a major source of revenue to government across the country so if tax is a compulsory non-refundable sum of amounts collected from individual for social economic development of the state what is taxation Is this the system of imposing the tax on them? Okay, so taxation has to do with what? The system that is used in imposition of that tax and the collection of what? That tax. So let's take taxation definition, and this is according to Microsoft and CASA 2005. They define taxation as the system of compulsory contributions, the system of compulsory contributions. The system of compulsory contributions levied by a government levied by a government or other qualified public body on people or other qualified public body on people corporations and property on people, corporation and property in order to fund public expenditure. In order to fund public expenditure. In order to fund public expenditure. Right, so that is what Microsoft and Carter 2005 defines taxation. So the system of that compulsory payments that is levied on people, organizations, and what? Properties. But the key thing here, you can see that in this thing, it's about government funding it what? Public expenditure. This is just the same as what we meant by the socio-economic what? development of the state because the socio-economic development of the state is as a result of what government expenditure okay so who is a taxpayer who is a taxpayer and a citizen who pays tax now so this can be an individual or what a company or an organization right an individual a company or that now so what are the types of taxes that we have that, that we can talk about so let's look at types of taxes mm -hmm. direct taxes and then indirect taxes so let's look at them in a bit detail. What are direct taxes? Yeah, taxes that are imposed. <laughs> yes, taxes that are imposed directly on the individual. Directly on the individual. When you say directly on the individual, what does it mean? It means with those ones you can um, you cannot avoid. Hey, no, you cannot shift it, shift it to somebody else. So direct taxes in a simple language, taxes imposed on the income of individual or companies, which cannot be what, shifted. All right. So direct taxes. These are taxes which are levied on the possession and incomes, on the possession and incomes 
on the possessions and incomes of individuals and profits of organizations of individuals and profits of organizations and individuals of individuals and profits of organizations whose burden cannot be shifted to someone else whose burden cannot be shifted to someone else whose burden cannot be shifted to someone else Right. So when it comes to direct taxes, there are some types of direct taxes that we can talk about. We can talk about the income tax. We can talk about the gift tax, my favorite one. And then we can talk about the capital gain tax. These are examples of, oh sorry, types of direct taxes. What are the income taxes? The income taxes are imposed usually on what? The profits of organizations or the income of what? Individuals. So the income taxes are imposed on the profits of organizations or the income of individuals. Now, note that the Tax Act does not define the word income. Right? So there is nowhere in the Tax Act that the definition of income was given. So here we're talking about pay as you earn as well as what corporate tax that's what we mean by this areas in in that case so the word income is not de defined in the act now one thing i didn't say earlier but you must note is that throughout this course we'll be making references a lot to the income tax act income tax act 2015 act 8 to Sorry, 896. We're we'll making a lot of references to this act. And I've uh, prepared a document on the various areas of this act that we will need for the echoes. So, <laughs> here it is. Okay, I know what I will do. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. So, we'll be making references to this. So, now, so this act doesn't define income. Rather, the act defined the word trading. So, when it comes to sources of income for companies, or sorry, sources of income in general, the act says that there are three sources of what? Income. We can talk about what? Business, employment, and what? Investment. Okay. For the purpose of advanced taxation, employment is not our focus. But it's about what? Business as well as investment. So, now, in order for us to derive the issue about the fact that there is trading, that means that a transaction must have a couple of characteristics or features to make it look like what? A trading activity. The, so these features are something that every student of taxation must know about. The first one of a transaction that is will be considered as trading, which will lead to the taxation or which will lead to tax, is what refers to as what? Profit motive. Profit seeking motive. What does this mean? It simply means that if the transaction involved is such that the entity is seeking to make a profit, then we will say there is what? A trading purpose there. So, for instance, the company had that um, the prices of shares in another company is likely to go up through insider dealings. And so the company went to buy those shares. Are you getting the idea? They went to buy those shares. So, once they are buying it and they have an intention of selling it out, we can say there is an element of what? Trading. If you remember carefully, this is something under IFRS 9, investment Financial instrument, financial instrument. When we are holding shares for what? Uh, trading purposes. Or better still, better still, if the company buys something and sells it at a higher price, then they are what? Making a profit. That is a profit-seeking motive. Second, 
the nature of the asset. The nature of the asset can also inform us whether the business is engaged in trading or not. Now, if the asset has a nature that is that can easily be marketable, so the nature of the asset depends on marketability. So if the assets acquired, if the property acquired, if the goods acquired is easily marketable, then we will establish that there is what? Some elements of trading. But if it is not something that is easily marketable, then we cannot establish trading for that transaction. The next thing is the way the asset is acquired. The way the asset is acquired. So how is the asset acquired? For instance, if the company outrightly buys the assets, then to some extent we can say there is what? A trading purpose. Rather than if it receives it as a gift or it receives it as uh, maybe donation, then we can say that there is no trading purposes. But if the company buys the asset and maybe even took a loan to buy that asset and want to sell that asset later on or want to develop the asset later on, then we can establish some elements of what? Trading in there. Another thing is the quantity but quantity apart. Quantity apart. So how many of the goods, how many of the assets did the company buy? If you bought only one. So for instance, um, recently uh, Techno is launching their new phone, Phantom 9. Right? Phantom 9. Now, the retail price, as they said, is 1,300 Ghana cities. So people can pre-order. Now, when the phone comes out, after that, the price is going to shoot up to somewhere around 1,007 or 1,008. Now, so if you are a company, you are an organization, and you are a greedy bastard, and when you, are, when you do pre-ordering, they give you a lot of gifts and a lot of bonuses, MTN, data, 2.5 gifts per, per month for six months. So... If you go and buy this, 100 pieces, so you pre-order 100 pieces, you come and sell, and tax authority come and say, oh, we just bought it. Uh, why? You bought it for what? Take it to your family members or for your employees. For your <laughs> so the quantity acquired can also prompt that there is what? A trading purpose in here in relation to that. Then I think one thing is the method of financing. I'll not be listing everything here. The method of financing. I'm not be talking about every, almost everything. If the company borrowed money to finance the undertaking, then there is a strong word, trading purpose there. Because you can't borrow money and uh, use it for anything else. But if you borrow the money and use it to acquire an asset, then there is an element of what trading. What are we saying? We are saying that to be able to say this is an income, that is taxable from business sources, then they must have what? These characteristics. If they are there, then the tax authority can charge the company those taxes. If they are not there, then the transaction is a free bond transaction. But there is nothing that is going to happen also like that. Then we come to investment because we, don't, we, we are skipping the employment. Investment, what do we have? What do we have? Interest. Dividends, discounts, all of those things are what comes from investments. Are you getting the idea? Do you know about discounts? Discounts is, is not something that is commonly noted in Ghana here. But for instance, if uh, I'm a lottery agent and you win the lottery, the National Lottery Authority, the Monday special, this annual, 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 annual. if you go and stake one and you win and your ticket is say, 10,000 Ghana cities. Then because you need money fast, you come to me. When you come to me, I will not pay you 10,000. I will discount it to be discounted. So I'll pay you somewhere like 9,500 Ghana cities. Then I will take you to the office and go and take what? The 10,000. The profit I am making, 500 Ghana cities, is what refers to as what? The discount. That has to also be taxed. I get it. It has to be taxed. 
and that is coming from investment source. So investment, we can talk about dividends, we can talk about interest, we can talk about royalties, we can talk about discounts. All of these are examples of dividends, sorry, investment income that is subject to tax. Now, we will look at some of these things later on in detail, especially dividend suffers a final tax of what? 8%. Uh, issues about royalties, we we're going to look at it from, the, from various perspectives as well later on. Second aspect, my favorite, gift tax, which doesn't work in Ghana here much. I don't know, when was the last time you received a gift and filed a tax return? Every day. So every day you receive gifts. Jeez. What a rough review. <laughs> All right. So what is a gift? A gift. Yeah. Okay. Benefits you didn't work for. So 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 let's say this. Let's say that you owe me um, five hundred thousand dollars, and I say give me uh, three hundred thousand dollars. Can you classify the two hundred thousand dollars I'm not taking as a gift? So I owe you five hundred thousand dollars. Then I said, because of your big head, give me just three hundred thousand dollars. And then it's count. <laughs> then it's what? It's count. So I'm saying that can I say that two hundred dollars is a gift I'm giving you? No. By what? It's a discount. Why is it a discount? Discount I cancel. Once I say it's a gift, I have to pay tax. Ah, so you don't want to say it's a gift. But if you say it's a discount, you have to pay tax. If you say it's a discount, you are supposed to pay tax. That is also an element of gift. Now, so the act defines gift as a receipt without consideration. A receipt without consideration. Or for inadequate consideration. A receipt without consideration or inadequate consideration. Or inadequate consideration. So there is no consideration. You didn't do anything at all under the agreement. Then I gave you the money. Or you just did something small. Then I gave you a huge sum of money. That, that is what? A gift. I get it. Like you go and sweep somebody's house and then the person gives you uh, two thousand dollars. I mean, it, it, that is not. Maybe I start with the qualification. More English. <laughs> All right. So, what constitutes taxable gifts? What constitutes taxable gifts? The following are the things that constitute taxable gifts: building of permanent or temporary nature, land, also constitutes that. Buildings of permanent nature, land, also constitutes that. Shares, bonds, and other securities can also be money, including foreign currencies, business and business assets. All of these are examples of that. All of these are examples of that. So that is also the issue about gift tax. Then we come to the last one, which is capital gain tax. What is capital gain tax? Capital gain tax. Mm -hmm. It is the gain made on the sale of um, an asset. Or sale of an asset, right? So we say that it is the taxation of the increase in the capital value of assets between the date of acquisition and the date of disposal. The increase in the capital value of an asset between the date of acquisition and the date of disposal. Between the date of acquisition and the date of disposal. And the date of disposal. So we bought it from on January 1 for $20,000. It can be a share. Then we disposed it of for 25,000 Ghana cities, we are making what? 5,000 Ghana cities. Now, if there was any modification on the assets, that would be added to the cost of the assets. Are you getting it? They will subtract the uh, proceeds, they will get what? 
how much that we had. So let's say we bought the thing for 20,000, then we did some modification of say 5,000. Meaning now the total value of the asset is 25,000. So if we sold it for 25,000, we didn't make any gain. But if we sold it more than 25,000, the difference becomes not a gain, which is subject to tax. That is what you have to understand when it comes to direct tax. Then we come to the indirect taxes. What are indirect taxes? Yes, taxes that are levied on the individual that can be shifted. That can be what? Shifted. Okay. So it can be shifted. Example. You are coming. It's an example. Oh, he has done it already. He has done it. He has done it. Jeez. Hey. Indirect tax. Yo, yeah, let's continue. These are taxes collected. These are taxes collected. These are taxes collected from someone other than persons or organization. These are taxes collected from someone other than persons or organizations. Other than persons or organizations responsible for paying the taxes responsible for paying the taxes so, but yeah but exercise duties no, make export duties okay exercise duties export duties import duties sales tax you got it purchases tax all of these are example of indirect taxes the national insurance uh, national health insurance or levy that Yes, you get fund levy. All of these are indirect taxes that are charged by the government. So that is also about indirect taxes. Big question. Why do we have to take taxes? So, importance of taxation. Mm -hmm. Importance of taxation. Source of revenue. Serve as a source of revenue to the government. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tax serves as what? A major source of revenue to the government, especially government across the globe. What else? Mm, so we're going to fund developmental projects. Yeah. Also, tax can be used to um, as a uh, uh, change in Tax can be used to control inflation. Also, to care and balance of payment deficits. That's true. Also, to uh, yeah, let them add the rest. So let them write it down. <laughs> <laughs> you are here, what's it? So, what he said, they are all true. Sometimes tax can also be used to restrain consumption of what? Harmful goods. Okay? To restrain consumption of harmful goods goods such as alcohol so in some countries the taxes on alcohol sorry a cigarette and alcohol tobacco is very high what the government is doing is to discourage people from what consuming it then sometimes also as you said the government can use it to control some aspects of the economy such as the balance of payment inflation um, um, then also Promoting tax can also be used as a tool for promoting what domestic fair or encouraging domestic fair so that government puts tax on imported goods, then they become expensive to discourage what the uh, importers and the consumers so that they can consume what domestic products in relation to that. But always when that thing happens, the country doing that must pray that the other country doesn't retaliate because when you impose taxes on goods that we import from america you are discouraging us to what produce and they can also do the same thing to you so that will be a new beer and will be able to chop its own food that is what you have to understand about some of the importance of taxation we need to talk about 
Now, as this semester is the first examination setting, probably the examiner could throw some of these questions in there. Are you getting it? That's what you need to understand. Finally, on that slide is to look at the principles of taxation. Every tax system must have certain uh, every tax system to operate eff effectively and efficiently must exhibit certain what features or must have set certain basic principles. This is what has been mentioned by Adam Smith, who has been accredited as the father of what economics, father of economics, not father of tax. Yeah. Not father of tax. The father of tax is I've forgotten the name, but it dates it dates back to the Roman Empire times. It's just it's just like, oh no, I remember my name is There are four principles. Now according to Adam Smith, every tax system must to be able to operate mm -hmm, to be able to operate effectively and efficiently must be built based on these four basic principles. The first thing is equity. Second thing is convenience. Third thing is certainty. And then the last one is economy. So let's take them one after the other and spend some few time, few minutes on them. What is equity? When we say the star system to be to be equity, what does it mean? Should be fair, right? Meaning that people should pay the tax that they, they have the ability to what? Pay. So if you are earning more, then you should pay more. If you are earning less, you should pay less. So the tax has to be proportional in nature. That as your income grows, so your tax liabilities will grow. So the tax system should be such a way that people pay tax based on their ability to pay. That means it's a fair system. Then we come to the next one called um, convenience. What does it mean when we say convenience? It means um, paying your tax. You shouldn't suffer to go and pay your tax. Maybe where you go and pay the tax. Of right, your tax. right, right. So convenience simply means that taxpayers and tax administra administrators shouldn't experience any inconveniences, are you getting it, in the undertaking of their duties. So as you rightly said, if you are located in Ablekuma, somewhere doing business there, and there is no Ghana Revenue Authority office there, and you have to come to Kaneshi Accra Academy here, travel that long distance to come and file your tax returns, Charlie, what's up? And then you go on. People will not pay. But assuming it is closer to them, are you getting it? Or the road network is good, so that tax administrators can easily travel there and take the taxes, then it will be what? Able to help the government to mobilize a lot of funds. So convenience of the system is critical. I think that is why a lot of uh, adverts, a lot of promotions are going on about taxation recently under this government especially. Next, certainty. What does it mean? Certainty. It means that taxpayer should be so some degree of certainty in the system right so this implies that true tax liability must be determined with reasonable certainty or a fair degree of accuracy this implies the true tax liability must be determined with reasonable certainty reasonable certainty or a fair degree of accuracy so there shouldn't be any cheat, right? There shouldn't be any corner corner. Now that is why Ghana Revenue Authority has developed an app on the Play Store that you can put there your salary and you can know the tax that you are supposed to pay. So that if your employer charge you more than you are supposed to pay, you can raise that issue up. Are you getting it? I hope you know about that app. It's on the Play Store. When you download it, you put your salary there, you know the payee that you are supposed to pay. Okay. So that when you take your pay slip and you see the payee and you say, hey, the figure is too big, that means your boss is chopping some. <laughs> so that is the issue about certainty. certainty. Then the last thing is about economy. What is economy? Economy. 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 Now, a tax system is perceived as good. If the cost incurred 
in the collection of the tax does not exceed the actual tax that we ought to collect. That is what we mean by economy, meaning we must achieve value for money. So the cost incurred in the collection of the taxes shouldn't exceed the amount of tax that is collected. That is why, because of the poor road network, the, the revenue collecting agency, that is the Ghana Revenue Authority, cannot travel to some uh, informal places. Why? Because the cost involved, the stress involved, is too much than how much money they are going to get there. But assuming everywhere is easily accessible, and you can take a car and him, you go and come, then it will be something that everybody will be happy to look out for in relation to that. Now, apart from tax, right. So the one thing that you need to understand is that um, when it comes to say revenue to the government, it's not only taxation that is a source of revenue to the government. What are other sources of revenues to the government apart from tax? Mm hmm. What are other sources of revenue to the government? Aside from borrowing. Okay, borrowing. Mm -hmm. Both international, local. So international and external borrowing. What else? We have local borrowing. Local borrowing. And the Bank of Ghana. Okay. Now, what's we'll the borrowing, both international and local? I've you seen local borrowing from Bank of Ghana. <laughs> then we have uh, royalties. Okay. Royalties. Diverse teachers. If the government sells some investments, that is a lottery. Yeah. Gives money, issue of treasury bill on bonds it also gives money, licensing also gives money, court fines and those things gives uh, money also to the government. So licensing fees and fines, all of these things give some money or put some money into the pocket of government. And that is what you got to understand. The final thing in that slide is. So discuss the sources of tax laws in Ghana. The sources of tax laws in Ghana. What are the various tax laws in Ghana that you know of? No, the... I just mentioned the Income Tax Act yes, 2015, yes, Act 896. That is there. We have the customs. We have the customs, excise, and preventive units, no. management law. We have the VAT Act is there, right? Internal Revenue. Authority Act is also there, and then any other acts that will be enacted by Parliament. So these are what you need to understand about that. So in the next video, we'll discuss the issue about tax administration, and then we will take it from there.